Hello. Let's follow the progression of this painting, Exhale. She is a 50 by 50 inch acrylic piece on gallery wrap canvas. And here you can see I have her propped against the wall. I started by a contour drawing, essentially blocking her in with some vine charcoal over top of a homemade stretch canvas. I love stretching my own canvases because it gives me uh, flexibility to be able to work on something pretty quickly without having to wait for it to get shipped to me. So uh, if, if this is something you're interested in, you can Google how to stretch a canvas. It's a very simple task uh, and it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. But here I am blocking her in I'm using a really large brush and you can see I have my palette box there on the floor. I lay the same colors out every single time I paint. I have about 24 colors that I use pretty religiously and have for a number of years. So uh, that's my palette box there on the floor. I'm working with golden heavy body paints and my brush is about two inches wide. And right now I am just thinking about values, value patterns in the fox the energy or thrust of her movement and really enjoying playing with some abstract landscape inspired tree shapes tree and sky shapes you'll see i'm cutting the sky in right now uh, after having had a really lovely walk in a grove of sunburst locusts earlier in the day the fox came from my dreams the subject matter of all of my paintings from the last couple years have been animals that showed up in my dreams and then also in my daily life in some capacity. So the fox was in my dream on Sunday evening and then I married her to my experience with the locust trees in the autumn color on Monday morning and decided that I needed to create or build a painting out of those two moments and I put them together. Now, I'm an intuitive painter, which means that I approach the concept uh, without much of a game plan. I had my piece stretched, I knew it was going to be a square and I was thinking about a fox with sort of a whirlwind or chore choreography of leaves dancing or swirling about her. And that, that was really as much as I allowed myself to visualize or plan for because the rest of the painting reveals itself as I work. So you can see here I've moved her off of the wall and, and placed her up on my easel so that I could get some more careful marks laid in really begin to pay some attention to her face and her personality and and that's the bulk of my my painting session at this point is just really thinking about the form of her face the form of her skull the way the light is hitting it and just starting to get those aspects defined a little more tightly on the painting the white lines that you see are chalk. I use a piece of chalk to redraw over top of the painted elements. It's a nice way for me to see where those drawing cor corrections need to be executed in paint. And so now I'm starting to respond or feel out this negative, or not negative, this darker value shape that's coming up from her legs. And I'm thinking about it as a tree trunk and, you know, exploring the idea of the branches coming out across her shoulder and leading us into this kaleidoscope of color that sits behind her head. And perhaps that color could become the leaves in this tree. Um, in, in my world, the tree's leaves do not all have to be the same color. <laughs> Just a little reminder that when you're the artist, you can take creative license and um, paint whatever you want. You don't have to paint what you see. So I'm building up some texture and line work in what is currently the negative space. 
I am carving into the, the gesso ground with some colored pencils and other materials. I'm doing some negative space painting. I am choosing some more line work. Ultimately, that tree trunk felt a little forced, and so I let that go. But there's hints of it underneath the paint that was laid over top. So those, those hints are really nice shadows, or what I refer to as history, in the painting. They create intriguing layers for the viewer when they come in closer and, and soak up the details of the piece. I did redraw her face. I discovered that I wasn't really pleased with how it felt. Uh, I used my, my little, I have a little dog, a little mixed breed dog here. Um, I used his profile as an example or studied his profile as an example. He's got a, almost a fox shaped head and uh, wanted to really play that up and have it feel just a little bit more delicate. So Sal was my, was my model for that. Now, in between these painting sessions, you may notice a change of clothing. Uh, every change of clothing represents a new day's worth of work on the piece. But what, what you're also not seeing in this video is that I spend a really substantial amount of time sitting back and looking at the painting and figuring out what comes next. I also take my iPad and Procreate and I play with different options on the iPad thinking about compositional shifts and changes and uh, you know so when I'm when I'm watching the paint dry and sitting and studying her I, I may think oh what if I were to uh, add a little spiral or twist her spine a little bit and interrupt that expected top line what might that look like and I'm able to go to my iPad and, and play that up pretty easily. I also work on the painting in different orientations. Flipping the painting over to study it is a great way to sort of separate myself from the actual design or the literal subject matter of the fox with that dark mass behind her. It allows me to just see the elements of the design for what they are and, and decide if there are things that needed to be changed. And when I had this piece, on its side and upside down, I realized that the shoulder of the fox was just too solid of a form and I needed to interrupt it with something. And so you'll notice I have my iPad there and I'm looking at different foliage reference photos and sort of playing with different types of foliage and what they might look like if they were drawn in or cut in into that shape. And ultimately I chose a wisteria and chalked in those shapes. And because I really wanted the color to be vibrant, I also popped or, or filled those chalk lines in with gesso. That's gonna give me a light base for whatever marks or colors those marks ultimately are. It's gonna give me a lighter base and cleaner color. So just a nice little technique or trick that I do to keep my color saturated when I know I'm going to be layering over top of something else. Particularly with lighter value acrylic paints, they tend to not be as opaque as the darker ones, so I really wanted them to sing, even though I hadn't decided yet what they were going to be. So now I'm playing with the color across the whole surface, putting little touches of it here and there, and seeing how my eye moves. Where is my eye stopping? Where is my eye moving too quickly? Where, you know, how can I control my focal point? Now I want my focal point to be her heart space, that yellow area. And it's, it's a challenge because typically when you have an animal face or you have a set of eyes in your painting, that face becomes a focal point. So I'm trying something new here in sort of trumping that face with a passage or area of the painting that demands a little bit more attention. And uh, I, think I, I think it was pretty successful here. So I am putting some leaf shapes into the negative space. So uh, lots of differences here, but also similarities. 
thinking about a nuanced color, my value patterns, the energy of the leaves as they move across the surface. And I really want them to frame that fox and to also really set off uh, the focal point or her heart space. So putting three sections of frames in or leaves in, I really like to work in sets of three. But each one is inherently different, although they are all related in some capacity. Also using really thick paint, which you can't tell from this video, but really globbing on some painterly marks and uh, appreciating the difference in texture or tactility across the surface of the painting. And here she is finished. Thank you so much for watching my video, watching the progression of this piece. If you're interested in seeing more of my work or participating in my classroom where I share plenty of video content similar to this one, please check out my online classroom space on Patreon. It's at patreon.com backslash Kimberly Kelly Santini. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day and happy painting.